This is a square, a red square. Here are two squares. One is red, the other is grey. Now here's a third square, which is pale pink in colour. And here's a grey square, half of which is coloured red. Fascinating, isn't it? But why am I telling you things that are quite abundantly obvious? The reason is that these shapes and colours, when used in the right combinations, can tell us a lot about kit cycles. What is a kit cycle, you might be wondering? Well, put simply, a kit cycle is the length of time that a football kit design is worn for. Back when I was a child in the late 1970s, it was not uncommon for football teams in England and Wales to wear their appointed football kit for two or three years, sometimes even longer. Now, in the 2020s, teams get a new kit design just about every year in most cases, and this is what's known as a one-year kit cycle. This is something you may regard as a dream come true, or a blight on the modern game, depending on your point of view. If you love seeing what those clever kit designers have produced for your favourite team on a regular basis, you're probably grateful to be living in an age when you need wait no longer than 12 months or so to find out. A contrary view is that one year is nowhere near long enough to appreciate a kit design fully, to say nothing of justifying the considerable expense of paying for yet another shirt, if wearing the latest shirt happens to be your thing. Whatever your opinion, you may wonder exactly when the one year kit cycle became a thing. I know I certainly did, so I decided to do some research to find out. When it comes to the history of British football kit design, there's few better places to start your research than historicalkits.co.uk. That's where I started mine, and that's where all my source information comes from. What I decided to do was to establish a time frame from the 1979-80 season to the 2022-23 season, and take every team that, during that period, has at some point played in the Premier League or Football League. Then, for each team, I noted down every time they started a domestic season with a new home kit. That's where our coloured squares and rectangles come in. Where a team started any given season with a new home kit, I've displayed a red square. If a team started a season wearing their home kit from the previous season, there's a grey square. Simple, you might think, but nothing in life is ever that simple. When you delve back through the historical records, you discover that some teams would begin a new domestic campaign by taking their old home kit and changing some minor aspect of it, like switching to a different pair of shorts, for instance, or some new socks. So, in this instance, it wouldn't be right to say a team had started the season with a new kit, but with a slightly different kit. Where this is the case, I've used a pale pink square. But even then, there are further complications to be had. On certain occasions, a team has started a season with their old kit, but only a matter of a few weeks or months later have decided to finally and belatedly wear their new one. On the infographic, this is indicated by a grey square that's half filled on the right with red. On very rare occasions, a team may have started the season with a new kit, only to replace it in the same season with yet another new kit, or even two kits. I'm looking at you, Blackpool. So here, I've divided up the square to show multiple new kits accordingly. And to confuse matters even further, some teams have started the season with a new kit, only to change an aspect of it, like the shorts or socks, at some point later in the same campaign. For that, I've shown a square that's divided half red and half pink. So, now you know the system, you can survey the fruits of my exhaustive efforts, happy in the knowledge that you can see when 115 teams from England and Wales changed their home kits over a 44-year period. But truth be told, that's not the main reason for doing all this research. I actually wanted to confirm a few things, the first of which I and we already knew, namely that one-year kit cycles are the norm in the modern era. Thanks to this chart, we can. Remembering that the red squares signify a one-year kit cycle, we can see by zooming out and squinting, if that helps, that there's a far higher concentration of red on the right-hand side of our timeline. We can loosely draw a line around those dense patches of red, just in case anyone out there is still having trouble working out what we're talking about. So that proves that one-year kit cycles aren't a myth, not that there was any need to, 
Can we even ascertain a specific point in time when they actually began? Well, no. Not easily in any case. You see, the problem is that every team adopted a one-year kit cycle at different points in time. Some did so during the last 10 years, others in the last 15, 20, 25 or whenever. And it might surprise you to learn that some brave clubs were changing their kit every year way back in the late 1970s and early 1980s, albeit not from then through to the present day. But yes, it's not exactly a new phenomenon. So, different teams switch to a one-year kit cycle at different times, but can we at least estimate roughly when this sort of thing became the norm? I decided to try and find out by doing some basic mathematics, and I reckon I've got the answer. I believe that the modern one-year kit cycle, on average, started for teams back in 2006. And if you look at this graphic where I've placed a black line at the start of the 2006-2007 season, you'll see that looks just about correct. Virtually all of the squares to the right of that line, i.e. the seasons that have passed since 2006-07, are red. So, 2006 looks to be when the rot set in. Sorry, a little insight into my own personal views there. But though the one-year kit cycle is long established and here to stay, seemingly, there are a few clubs that are trying to reverse the trend by extending the life of either their home or away kits. I believe that's something we should see more of in future. If we're to see more genuinely creative and original kit designs in the years to come, we need to buy more time for the designers to do so, rather than just rehash something that was worn 20 years ago. So there we are. Some biting comment for you there as we draw this video to a close. I'm Chris Oakley. Thanks for watching. And if you've got any comments of your own, please do drop me a line.